I'm going to be showing you an easy, quick and easy beginner version of this headband. This is my crochet sweet butterflies pattern and this is the matching headband for my sweet butterflies poncho or shawl. But on this video tutorial I'm going to be making a matching headband showing a different stitch pattern that would be easier for a beginner. This is the poncho that I'm making and this one would be a perfect stitch for a beginner. So you could use this same stitch that I'm showing you for the headband to make this matching poncho like mine. So this is the poncho that I had gotten from a boutique. So you can see the stitch on it and it's very close to the stitch that I'm going to be showing you. They may have used a smaller, this was probably machine made, but you could probably get the look with a smaller hook, but I like the hook that I used for this one. And this is the same hook, crochet hook, that I'm going to show you how to use to make the headband that matches this one. This is the style of yarn, it's really gorgeous, that I used for the Sweet Butterflies poncho. So. This color is the same yarn, and this color is called White Russian. And I go into detail about how I made this one. This is the exact same stitch that I used for different other different yarns that you'll also see in that video tutorial. For this crochet project, I'm using my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, as well as a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. For my headbands, I used the Goody Ouchless Thin Elastic Ponytail Holders, and you'll need three ponytail holders for each headband. So I have six of them because I'm going to be making two headbands. So three thin ponytail, elastic ponytail holders for each headband. I'm going to be using two different yarn styles to show you to make two different headbands. I'm used showing this one because it matches my poncho that I'm making right now in the same color. This yarn is King Cole Opium. Here's some information about this yarn. So it's 250 meters or 273 yards. The shade is 197. The other yarn that I'm using is by Juniper Moon Farm Tenzing Yarn. It's 85% extra fine merino wool and 15% yak. So this is an interesting yarn. But you could use any style of yarn that you want for your headband. This one is 153 yards. I'm going to be showing you, on a separate video tutorial, I'm going to be making a hat out of this that will match the ponchos, the mommy and me hats, so you'll be able to see this yarn again. But I'm also going to make the headband too because it's just a beautiful color. And the color is Victorian Rose. If you love this style yarn and want to find out more information, this is by KnittingFever.com. And this is how much I paid for this particular yarn. I got it on sale. So this wasn't the price I paid, but um, the sale price was really good, so I got it. For my headband, I liked the measurement to be 16 inches. So I'm going to be showing you how to make one that's 16 inches, but you can just change the size if you want one a little smaller or a little bit longer. So I'm going to be showing you how much I chain, how many chains I make for this one. If you want to change the size, to a different chain number, it's just a multiple of two. So just make it a multiple of two and it'll work for this pattern. 
So go ahead and get the yarn that you're using for your headband and then you're just going to fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop. Then just take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. And then you're just going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch down that knot, and then just pull on the yarn so that the loop goes right around your crochet hook and then we're going to start making our chain. So I'm just going to show four of them on video tutorial. You just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your first chain. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for your second chain. Third. And fourth. So for mine, I made a chain of 84 with this style yarn, and it actually ends up measuring about 16 inches, but if I slightly stretch it, it'll reach 17. So it's just a little bit smaller in size than my butterfly, sweet butterfly headband. So this is what mine looks like after completing a chain of 84. Or you can just, it's a multiple two of two or an even number. Then what you're going to do is just take and hold that last stitch with your middle finger and your thumb. And then you're going to make a chain of four. One, two, three, and four. And that counts for the next row that counts as your first double crochet and chain one. So the double crochet would be the three chains and then the one fourth chain would be the chain one. Now you're going to make a double crochet into the sixth chain from the hook. So you're holding the fifth chain. So just go back one for the sixth chain, so one, two, three, four, five, six, because you're going to want to skip a stitch. So that one fifth stitch is the skipped stitch, and then you're going to yarn over, and then you're going to go into the sixth chain from the hook. And then you're going to bring up a loop, and then you have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through two of the loops. And then you have two loops remaining. And then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops. So then you can see how you moved up to the next row. So this chain three on the end counts as your first double crochet. And then you have a chain one space between the two double crochets and then you wanted to make sure you skipped a stitch at the bottom which is why you went into the sixth chain from the hook. Now you're going to chain one and then you're going to skip the next stitch. So I just want to show you the stitch pattern for beginners. So here this is the stitch where I made the double crochet. So the next stitch would be here. And you can see how there's a back loop. And then you have a front loop. And then we were going to go right down the center of the chain or stitch for each time that we crochet our stitch. So we want to skip this next stitch. So we're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. So you just yarn over and then you're going to skip the next stitch and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. So you just go right down the center of that stitch, bring up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops and then yarn over, turn the hook upside up, 
down and go through the two remaining loops to complete a double crochet. Then you just chain one and then you're going to skip a stitch, yarn over, skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two loops, two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops. So you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way across. I'm just going to back up a little bit so you can kind of see how I hold my hands as well. So chain one, and then I'm going to skip a stitch, and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, skip a stitch, and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way across to the end. You can see how it's a very simple stitch. And this is how your stitch would look with regular yarn. And then I'm going to be showing you what this same stitch will look like with the opium yarn. So you can see that it looks really complicated and beautiful. People will be amazed and think that you used a really complicated stitch to make it. So go ahead and finish making your double crochet and then chain one, yarn over, skip a stitch, make a double crochet into the next stitch and just keep, keep repeating this pattern all the way across to the end. So now this is what my stitch pattern looks like. You see how it makes little boxes. Then to move up to the next row you're just going to make a chain of four. One, two, three, four. And then you just turn your work So that first chain four, again, that represents your double crochet and your chain one. And then this part is easy. Now you just make a double crochet, so you yarn over, and then you just go right into the top stitch. And do this again. So you yarn over, and then you just go right into the top stitch of the dou first double crochet from the previous row. So you just go right into that top stitch and bring up a loop and then just make a double crochet and then you just chain one and then make a double crochet right into that top stitch of the previous rows double crochet And that's all there is to this crochet pattern. It's really simple design. Really easy to make. And you can make as many or as little rows as you want for your headband. So go ahead, finish making your double crochets and chain ones across to the end. and then come back. So here is what mine looks like so far. It's still a really pretty pattern. It's a plain pattern with regular yarn, but you'll see that when we use the opium yarn, it can make it really gorgeous. It adds a little bit of a different look to it. Now, again, I show the butterfly Sweet Butterfly 
poncho headband at the end of the poncho video tutorial. So this one I have it upside down. The butterflies are a V shape on this headband. So for this headband, this style of yarn, I used four rows for the sweet butterfly with this opium yarn. So you're not going to need, I like the width of this headband. So let me show you what the width is. You can make it any width that you want. I just, for mine, I just like that width. And it's about two inches. It measures about two inches. So I'm going to make, with the regular yarn, I'm just going to go three rows. So I'll move up with you again for the third row. And again, for the butterfly stitch one that I made, I made four rows. So to move up again, it's the same way. You would just, I just finished my last double crochet into the top stitch of the previous row's double crochet. And then I'm just going to chain three, actually chain four, because you want the chain one. So one, two, three for the double crochet, then chain one, and then turn your work. So I have a chain four. And again, the same way, you just go right into the top stitch of the previous row's double crochet and make a double crochet into that stitch. And then chain one. And then double crochet into the top stitch of the previous row's double crochet. So this is what it looks like when I'm finished. It looks really pretty. Then you just take and finish off. So you just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring enough yarn through to sew one of the elastic ends in place. So before we sew the elastic ends in place for your headband, we're going to take and bury that loose yarn end that you have on the other side, not the long end that you left for sewing, but the short end that we started with. Take your tapestry needle and just put it right onto that loose yarn end. Then you're just going to take and weave the yarn through your work. So I just kind of go in and out through the stitches and just bury my loose yarn end and then I like to go back on my on oh, back along the stitch in the opposite direction as well just to make sure it's nice and buried and it won't show on your work or unravel and then you just take and just trim it without cutting your stitches and then you can see how it's practically invisible, you don't see it at all. Now we're going to take and sew the elastic ends. So now go ahead and take three of your thin ponytail, elastic ponytail, and go ahead and set one of them aside. Just take two of them. And you're going to take one of, this will be the center, so just lay that down. Then you're going to take the other one and you're going to bring it on the one side, bring it into the circle, and then fold it over on top of the one side. And then you're forming the two loops around my finger. So you have two loops around the finger that you folded through the center. And that's how you're going to make each end. So go ahead and take your tapestry needle and put it onto the long end that you left for sewing or just the same colored yarn. And then decide what side that you want. Actually, it won't matter for the right side or wrong side, but you can try and have the right side facing up. For this yarn, it doesn't matter. Each side is beautiful. Then you're going to take the elastic loop end, so those two loops that you formed, you're going to take and lay it 
on to the end of the headband and just kind of hold it just like this and then you're just going to take and sew it in place so I'm just going to come up and I came up the center of one of the loop bands and then I'm going to go back out the one loop and then back up on the opposite side so you could you don't have to sew it down the same way as me you can use whatever method that you want you just have to secure the loop ends so that they don't come undone so you can see how I just kind of sewed the loop ends in place and then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side so I'm just going down the center and then back up on the opposite side and then back down the center and then back up I just want to make sure that the ends are secure the elastic is sewn in place and that it won't come undone. And then the other thing too is you don't want to tangle up the yarn and the elastic ends. And then, when you're finished sewing it and securing it in place, and you can go through it several times, just making sure that it's nice and secure and that it's not going to come undone. Make sure you don't make too large of a stitch, too. And then, once you're finished, you can take and tie a knot. So I'm just going to go through one of the loops that I made. Uh oh, I went through the elastic part, so I didn't take that out. And then just go right through and tie a knot. So again, I just go right through the stitch, right through the loop to tie a knot. And I did that twice. Then you can take and just weave the loose yarn end into the work. So again, weaving your loose yarn end is really important. I've seen really sloppy work where they just kind of let the loose yarn ends hang and um, you don't want your loose yarn ends showing. <laughs> So I just go back and forth and just kind of weave in the loose yarn in. That way it won't come unraveled and it also won't be hanging loose and making your crochet work look bad. And then you just do the same thing for the opposite side. So what I tried to do is try to make the loop end on the wrong side. But again, this is going to be towards the back of the head, so it doesn't really matter. The only thing is just try not to twist your headband. Try to keep it straight. And then on the opposite side, you're again going to loop. Fold the other ponytail holder on the opposite side. And then sew the loops onto the opposite side of your headband. the same way. So here you can see and then you just take and you sew the loops onto the opposite end the exact same way. Then you have your gorgeous headband all finished. So now I'm going to show you how to use the opium yarn, how to crochet this exact same stitch using the opium yarn. So I used four skeins of yarn to make this poncho 
and I show the measurements in my Sweet Butterfly Poncho video tutorial but I love the color of this and I, I out of that four skeins I'm leaving a little bit left over to make the headband so I'm going to show you how to make how I made the headband using the opium yarn so this yarn is really gorgeous and for me it's fun to work with but for a beginner you might be a little bit intimidated by this yarn just because of the thicker portion as thin and then it goes into a thick portion but it's still easy to use so basically you just take the yarn and you're going to start the same way I leave always leave a little bit of a loose yarn end for bearing into my work so for this one since it's starting with the thicker I'm going to add a little bit extra loose yarn end and then just take and fold the yarn over on itself to form a loop and I'm still using my 3.75 millimeter crochet hook just go right through that loop and then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb and then you're just going to yarn over turn the hook upside down and then go through the loop for a slip knot and then just cinch that knot down and then cinch the loop around your crochet hook and then you're going to make your starting chain and again because yarn choice can affect the size of your stitch and even though we started with a certain chain with the regular yarn yarn choice can affect the size so you can't make the same number of stitches or you may not be able to make the same number of stitches that you did with a regular yarn with a new yarn that you're using so what I'm basically saying is that yarn choice will affect the size of your work so you're going to go by inches rather than by the number of chains so I'm still going to make this a 16 inch headband so so far you see that I made two, two chains and that's the other thing about this yarn too it curls a little bit and so it's hard to see the stitch count so you have to kind of look at the stitch a little closer to see where to put the crochet hook into so you just yarn over go through and you make the chains the same way so I have three chains so go ahead and make your chains the number of chains that you need to get the 16 inch size headband when you come back I'll show you how many chains that I made actually I'm going to show you how I crochet that way you can kind of watch how I crochet with this yarn so I made five chains six and you may need to loosen up the loop to allow a little bit more room for the crochet hook as you make your chains so so far I have one two three four five six seven eight nine let me just double check so that's the thing too seeing the chains let me just show you with my my um, tapestry needle so here is one stitch two three four five six seven eight nine ten So, so far I have 14, 15, 16, so I have 20 and I'm moving up to my thick portion again, 21, 22, so you can see how I'm making the chains, 24, and then this is how the work will look. So it's not that difficult to work with but again for a beginner I would recommend trying the regular yarn first 
and then you would just measure it until you get the 16 inches. I have one inch blocks on my board here. So, so far I have 24 and I'm about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 inches. So for the opium yarn I made a chain of 76 to get the same size as with this headband. So again I started with a chain of 76 and then the rest is made the exact same way. So I'm going to make a chain, I'm going to hold that last stitch and actually you're going to want to go one back from that last stitch. So I'm going to go two stitches back from the crochet hook because that's going to be our skipped stitch. So now you're going to make your chain of four. One, two, three, four. So now I have one, two, three, four, five chains and I'm holding the sixth chain from the hook. I'm going to make a double crochet into the sixth chain from the hook. So I'm going to yarn over and then I'm going to go into that sixth chain from the hook. I'm going to bring up a loop. I have three loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two of the loops and then I'm going to yarn over and then go through the two remaining loops. So you can see how you formed a box. So this chain three on the end is your double crochet, the first double crochet for the second row. And then you have a chain one space between the two double crochets and then you have the skipped chain one, uh, skipped stitch on the starting chain. Then you're going to make a chain of one You're going to skip a stitch and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. So you yarn over, skip a stitch, and then go into that next stitch. Bring up a loop and then make a double crochet. And that's all there is to it. The rest of it is made the exact same way. I'm just going to show you a little bit as I crochet. So I chain one and then you can see how this stitch is a little bit difficult to see because it's curly but I can tell that this is the next stitch and then I need to work into that second stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, skip a stitch, yarn over, skip a stitch and then go into the next stitch over for a double crochet. and then chain one. So sometimes I'll lift up on the hook a little bit to make the loop a little larger if I need to get the thicker portion through the loop for the chain one. Then I'm going to skip so I can tell the stitch is into the double crochet was in this stitch so I'm going to skip this next stitch and make a double crochet into the next stitch. Bring up a loop, make my double crochet, and then you can see how it creates this gorgeous pattern with a thicker and a thin portion. So I'm going to back up and just show you how I hold my fingers as I crochet. So I'm going to chain one, and then I'm going to skip a stitch and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, skip a stitch and then a double crochet into the next stitch. And I'm going to repeat this pattern all the way across. I'll make one more with you. So 
So go ahead, finish making your double crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, and then double crochet all the way across. So this is what mine looks like after I'm finished. And then when you get to the end, you just make your double crochet into the last stitch. Now sometimes it can be hard to see these stitches, so as long as it looks like this, if you have to skip an extra stitch to get into the last stitch on the end, then that, that is fine. Then, the same way that you did with the regular yarn, you just chain four, and then just turn your work and then the same thing, it's real easy you just make a double crochet into the top stitch of the previous rows double crochet and then chain one and repeat double crochet into the top stitch of the previous rows double crochet chain one double crochet into the top stitch of the previous rows double crochet. It's that simple and it just creates a really beautiful pattern that looks really difficult to make and is really beautiful with this yarn. And it actually looks good with any yarn too. I love this headband as well with this style of yarn. So then you just make, I'm going to make the same number of rows using this yarn as I did for this yarn and then you just sew the elastic on the same way on this one that you did with the regular yarn. And this is what the finished headband looks like. Turned out really gorgeous and you can't tell that it was just a really simple stitch to create it.